Hey, what's up YouTube? Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your rear brake pads and your rear brake rotors on a 2011 Acura MDX. Now this is a rotor drum combo. It also has the parking brake shoes inside here. Hopefully those are in good shape and we don't need to mess with those, but we're gonna change out the pads and this rotor. Now the first thing I like to do is push the caliper piston back inside the caliper just by prying a little screwdriver in here and wedging that against the edge here and just prying that in, pushing the brake fluid backwards through the system up into the master cylinder. Now before we do that, we need to pop the hood and make sure that we have enough room in the master cylinder so we don't overflow that and make a big mess. I'm just cycling the piston backwards, pushing the fluid into the master cylinder so we will not need to bleed the brakes this way. But let's go take a look and see if we've got room for that. Now here's the master cylinder a reservoir right here. You can see it is actually pretty full. I'm still going to go ahead and push those caliper pistons back in and hopefully we don't overflow this. If you do feel like it's too close, you can take the cap off and suck out some of that old fluid with a turkey baster or even just roll out a couple paper towels and try to wick up some of the fluid that way. The fluid probably should be changed. I'll talk to the owner about that but for right now i'm just going to cycle it backwards up into the master cylinder and hope we don't overflow that a lot of people ask me if you have to take the cap off when doing this and you don't any air in there will still be able to escape if you're concerned about that or additional pressure you can loosen that lid all right now that we know we have enough room in there we can just grab a flathead screwdriver or a small pry bar and if you can just wedge it here into this little opening and then just kind of pull that towards you see how that's just enough leverage now we've got a lot more room in there for the thicker pad material. I'm going to shift this in between the inside pad and the rotor and pull that one more time just to make sure that we get that pushed all the way in. All right, now we can loosen and remove these two caliper slide pin bolts, and those are a 12 millimeter. I'm going to see if I can break them loose with this guy here. And we'll set those aside. Now these rear calipers are so light. I'm going to set that over there out of the way on the axle. This is an all-wheel drive, so we've got the rear axle right there. Just so that that's out of the way so that we can remove this caliper bracket now. Now we can pop the old pads out real quick. Just take note that the uh, squealer right here, which is just about to start rubbing, this is on the bottom on the inside. Now these two bolts right here, we need to loosen and remove those. There we go. And it's a good idea to have a hand on this so that it doesn't drop when you take these bolts out. All right, now we need to remove this rotor drum combo and these can be stuck on here pretty good sometimes. So you see that we've got these screws holding it on and this little tool right here, this Vessel Impact Screwdriver comes in handy. Now this is not Phillips, this is JIS3 and this little screwdriver is actually an impact screwdriver. You see right here in the back, this little metal cap, we just have to strike that several times and so it will actually ratchet the screwdriver counterclockwise to loosen these as you hit it. So let's see if we can break those loose. That felt like it was starting to turn. Nope, not coming loose just yet. Let's try the other one here. We just cannot seem to break these loose. Let me try some PB Blaster on those. Now this stuff works great for breaking stuff loose. Let's see if that'll help. Just a little squirt on each one. Might be enough to penetrate in there. Oh, can't quite get that. Well, it won't be long till I just say abort. Yeah, usually this is the trick, but that doesn't seem to be working this time. So I'm gonna try this right here. This is just a little Milwaukee bit. So I've hammered this bit in. Let me see if I can get on here still with a little impact. See if this'll do anything. That got it. That's all we needed. This is just another trick that you can try is just pound one of these bits in there. So you know it's all the way in. Now this is a Phillips 3, but it's pretty close to the JIS. And then we've just got a little impact driver here. Let's see if that'll work. Nope, let's try that again. You've gotta pound it in, make sure that it's nice and flush. Let's see if this will work this time. Now nah, it's just pulling that bit out. Now let me try it with a longer bit here. Let's see if we can get it like we got the other one. Got it. All right, that's the ticket. Didn't have to drill it out. 
So this isn't gonna just pop right off, but as long as you don't have the parking brake on, we can just give this a few whacks here with the rotor remover 9000. So let's give it a few whacks. There, we got it. Oh, stuck on there good. Lots of brake dust in there, but we got lucky. All right, now we want to take a look at our parking brake shoes. Make sure that there's still a good thick lining there, and it looks like we're good here. But I'm going to clean these off or knock some of this dust off. I don't want to spray too much on the actual pad material. We don't want to saturate that. That's not good for it, and it'll cause that glue to come off. But just knock the dust off in this area here, and that's all we really need to do. That looks good. Now we also want to clean all the rust off of this hub here, this sh little shoulder right here. This place is notorious for making those rotors stick, so we're going to clean that off with a wire brush. I'm just going to use this little wire wheel. It's getting pretty worn out, but it'll still work. Just make sure you wear some safety glasses for this. Okay, that's good enough. And we're going to brush the surface of this with some anti-seize just to make sure the next time this needs to come off, it'll come off pretty easily. Mostly around the shoulder of this spot right here. And a little goes a long way on this stuff, so you don't need to get too carried away, but that should be good. We can kind of wipe off the excess or kind of distribute that pretty evenly. I probably did way too much, but that's perfect. Before we put on the new drum rotor combo, we need to spray this also down with some brake cleaner just to make sure that we get off all that oil. These are all packed in a protective oil to prevent them from rusting while they're just sitting on the shelf. Just wipe out this little drum area too. All right, if you look down here, you see that little star wheel right here? That you can turn to adjust these parking brakes outward through the little hole in the drum. Let me show you. So you see the old drum right here, we have this little rubber plug. We just need to pop that out and transfer that over to our new one. It's pretty easy to do. Just push that out from the other side. There it is right there. And we'll just press that into the new one. All right, and then we can put the new rotor on. Just need to line up these two little tapered holes so that we can put our screws back in. You, you can see this little rubber plug now that we have in there. So if we ever need to adjust these parking brakes or if we do need to tighten them, I don't think we will. We didn't really have any excessive wear there and this parking brake was holding just fine. But if you do need to, all you need to do is pull out that rubber plug and you can tighten that little star wheel adjuster. Now on these little screws right here, I am going to put them back in. You can buy replacements if you strip these out. But a lot of people say that they're not necessary, that the lug nuts will just hold that rotor on and that they're really only in place for manufacturing, basically as the vehicle is doing, going down the assembly line. But I usually just put them back in as long as they're still in good shape as long as they're tight should be fine all right now before we put this bracket back on we just need to clean this up and we're going to change out our hardware that's the first thing we'll do is just pop these off now just pay attention these are slightly different this one here has a little tab on this side and we're also going to pull off these slide pins just pull these out and clean and regrease them just wipe off all the old grease now sometimes i'll pop these back in see if i can get some more of that dirty grease to come out these ones really aren't that bad. They're not too pitted or anything, but if they are, you can always replace these. And if these are really stuck, you can also pull off these boots and clean out that caliper recess. I've got some brushes for that too. Clean those out really well with brake clean if needed. These are just not really in bad shape at all. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more new grease and pop them back in. That little boot will just slide up there. Now here you also need to pull on the boot and squeeze out any of the air. You want to make sure that these are not pushing out when you're done it should look like that if they're pushing outward you have too much air in there or too much grease this is by uh, versacam the synthetic caliper grease put that in kind of spin it around and pull back on the boot to burp out any air and that looks good now before we put the new hardware on I'm going to clean this area really well with a wire brush. You can see it's starting to rust and you don't want that to happen because the rust will get underneath those clips and that'll do what's called rust jacking and that will cause additional pressure on the brake pads and cause them to drag. So I'm going to use the wire wheel again on this. So just make sure we wear some safety glasses. All right, that looks a lot better. Now before we put the hardware in, I'm also going to grab this same caliper grease and just do a quick little thin coating underneath here really just kind of as a protectant, just trying to prevent some corrosion underneath where those abutment clips go. 
prevent a little bit of rust jacking so that that doesn't uh, start to lift on us and cause those brakes to bind. This is not so much a lubricant as it is a protectant here. And then our kit came with new hardware, so we're gonna put that on. Nowadays, it seems like most new brake pad sets come with hardware. Occasionally they don't, and you might have to try to clean up the old stuff, but it's recommended that you replace it. And it should just snap in place like so. Just make sure that it sits nice and flush. And this is ready to go back on. Now these two caliper bracket bolts, you can see these little washers that came off as well. I'm gonna use this Permatex thread locker on here and I'm just gonna put a little bit on each bolt and just kind of spin those around. We really wanna make sure that these stay put. Whoops, that's way too much. Perfect. Yeah, I got a bunch on my glove here, but just try to spread that around on these bolts. All right, that's that's enough on the bolts there. Okay, I'm gonna try to bring you down here and show you how these little washers just kind of sit right in there on the inside. So it's a little tricky to get these to stay, but that's where they go. And then we just gotta carefully line that up and then we can get our bolts started. And then we'll just get these snug. All right, now the torque spec that I found online for these caliper bracket bolts is 65 foot-pounds, and I'm using this right here, my gear wrench 85062 torque wrench. All right, now I'm gonna grab some of this stuff right here. This is the Permatex Silicone Ceramic Extreme, and I like to put this on the back of the brake pad right here on the back of the shim. That seems to help dampen some of the vibrations that can cause noise. Just a thin coat is really all you need, and a little bit at each end so that that won't get hung up or stick inside this little abutment clip. We just kind of line those up at a little bit of an angle like that. Take note that the squealer or the little noisemaker on this one goes on the inside at the bottom. Same with the outside pad, just a thin coat of this stuff. And I like just for good measure to put a little bit at the ends here where it's gonna slide in and out of these little channels right here. Make sure you don't get any on the surface of the pad here. If you do, make sure you clean that off. And then we can just put this one in Kind of the same thing if you kind of kind of slide that in at an angle now we didn't have these v-springs on our vehicle but the kit came with some and you can see that the holes are in the pads for these i'm going to go ahead and put them on this will prevent the pads from dragging on the rotor i think it's a good addition i'm going to go ahead and put it on now the trick with these is as you put them on you really need to have one hand holding the brake pads or squeezing them together otherwise the v-springs will push the pads apart basically just push them out onto the floor but a nice firm grip on the pads, squeezing them together will prevent those from sliding out. That looks good. Now, you do want to inspect the brake caliper piston here. Looks like our boot is pushed out a little bit. So I'm going to try my best with one hand to push that back in. Kind of just massage that in carefully so that that doesn't tear when I put the caliper back on. Now, I should have done this before I put those V-springs on, but I still think I can do this with one hand. All right, there we go. I just kind of pulled that back a little bit with a little pick and that looks good. We can also put just a little bit of this silicone ceramic extreme grease on the little contact points here and on the face of that caliper piston. When we put this on, make sure that you don't twist the hose or this will this will pull to one side or bind, but that looks good. All right, now sometimes you do have to pull in on these slide pins to get this to line up. And you can see that there's a little flat spot here on the slide pin, and that lines up with this little spot right here on the caliper. Just need to make sure that those are lined up, otherwise this won't sit right. If you have to spin the slide pin around, you can do that. And then we can get these caliper slide pin bolts started. And just gonna zip those snug. All right, and then the torque spec that I found online for these is 25 foot-pounds. Again, using that same gear wrench, torque wrench. And you're done. Now, it's very important before you drive away, you need to step on the brake pedal several times, which will push the caliper piston back out, pressing that pad up against the rotor where it needs to be. Now, when you do this, make sure that you don't press all the way to the floor. That can damage the seals in your master cylinder. Just press it down about halfway several times until it feels firm. And then don't forget to double check the master cylinder and make sure that that fluid is at the appropriate level as well. And you should be good to go. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up some of these parts and tools as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.